Okay, so this video is about preparing your hair for dreadlocks. What you should do before you get dreads. Um, oh my god, this is a, gonna be a crazy video. Okay, um, one, maybe I should have written this down. One, you need to grow your hair out. You have to have hair to have dreadlocks, believe it or not. So I recommend, you can, okay, you can dread your hair with three inches of hair. Should you? Probably not. That's probably retarded. Um, I would not do that, although I did do that. Um, kind of. My hair was, the sh my hair when I dreaded it was five inches on top and the back, the front, my bangs were a little bit longer, so we'll say six, six and a half inches and the side were three to four, maybe around three and a half, four inches. And um, what I did was I dreaded my, a couple, put a couple dreads in like the front of my hair and the one in the front, I think, one in the back, and then I washed my hair to see if they'd stay in. I guess it would have been more effective to try the shortest spot, but I didn't. Um, and they stayed in. So from there, I took those dreads out. Um, I didn't do them very tight either, so it wasn't anything bad. And then I was like, okay, I'm ready to dread my hair. I went to a, this a random salon had this chick section. I told her how I wanted them sectioned. I wanted one inch squares, and I wanted them layered in brick patterns so you wouldn't see lines down my head. For those of you who don't know what the brick pattern is, just look at a brick wall. It's how they have, they have the brick staggered. So one would be here, and then one's here instead of being right on top like checkerboard. So I did brick layered. She did that for me. I came home. To, I went to my friend's house, actually, and dreaded my hair that those next two days. So all that being said, you can do it with three inches of hair. The side of my hair was three inches, but the dreads were literally, there's probably like this much dread, and then like the tip was like sticking out like this much because you don't want to pull your tips in right when you do it unless you really know what you're doing because um, they're going to come out. I do that now when I dread people's hair. I pull the tips in, but um, I know what I'm doing. So I just, I'm just trying to be, I don't have to contradict myself or anything, but I pull them in pretty tight. So if you can do that, then do it, but otherwise you don't have to. And if you don't want the blonde and tips look, then that's totally cool. You don't have to do that either. But um, yeah, so your hair needs to be what I would personally recommend is I would recommend that your hair be touching your shoulders, that the shortest part of your hair be five to seven inches, preferably seven. Honestly, the longer you can wait, the better. But that being said, you don't have to wait till your hair is to your belly button. <laughs> you can do it when your hair is maybe like, preferably it'd be awesome if your hair was like a foot long. That would be incredible because then if you dreaded it, the shortest they could, would possibly be is they would shrink up half the way or half the length that you had, then you still have six inch dreads, which that means your lowest one would hang down from your neck to like right here. Um, so that would be awesome. Um, they wouldn't be super short, sticking out everywhere, but that also a foot of, of growth is two years. So I can understand if you guys don't want to wait that long. Okay, so that being said, growth, how long your hair should be before you do it. Next point for me to talk about is, what should it be? Your hair needs to be clean. So go ahead and um, maybe the first, maybe the week to two weeks before you dread your hair, you need to um, switch to a shampoo that's going to leave no residue in your hair. So I, I use Dreadhead HQ's liquid soap. You can use that too. You can use a couple different things, honestly. But um, that's what I use. It works. I think it works best. I had danger for a little while and it, it got rid of it immediately. Like in, when I first got dreads, I had some danger like on the back of my neck. And... Um, it got rid of it immediately. Um, you can do the, the, the baking soda wash to straight hair. You can, um, what's another couple of good ones? Just anything that's gonna leave your hair with no residue in it, because you want your hair, and you're not gonna condition it either. You want for that, that week before you dredge your hair, start washing it. Don't condition it. Maybe wash it once or twice or three times that week. But the day before you wash, wash the, for sure the day before you wash. It's not really crucial that you wash with this shampoo a million times before you dredge your hair, that's overkill. So really the most important thing is just the couple washes before you dredge your hair and definitely the day before. So that way the next day your hair will be dry um, and clean. So if your hair gets oily really fast, so say you were to wash it the day before and your hair is already oily the next day, then what I recommend for you would be to wash it the day you dredge your hair and maybe blow dry it so that it gives your hair, your hair will be kind of all frizzy and a little bit more textured than it normally would be. But as long as it's dry, you're ready to go. So that's what I would do for those of you who are, whose hair gets really oily and um, 
if you have dreads and you're watching this and you're getting dandruff your hair still gets really oily really fast I have a video that you can watch watch um, I'll post that down below hopefully I can remember what that one is but um, it's just one of my videos I think it's the one over uh, what is it I can't remember oh maybe it's called dealing with I think it's called dealing with dandruff so watch that video um, anyway next thing is really when you're ready to go if you find the method of, of dreading that you want to use of dreadlocking your hair that you want to go whether it be twist and rip back comb um, strictly crochet the way that I do it which is kind of a combination of back combing and um, crochet find your way find your way that you want to do it and then from that step the next thing you do need to do is find some friends to come over to your house and help you do it um, if you don't really trust them or you're a lot of, a lot of you guys want to come out here for me to do your hair and I'm sorry but I won't but and you you asked me who could and what I recommend is that you learn to do it yourself man learn how to dread your own hair because then you'll be able then learn how to do your own maintenance you'll save a lot of money you'll save a lot of time you'll save a lot of a, you won't be as stressed as often because you won't have to worry about going somewhere setting up an appointment learn to do it yourself man have those friends come over maybe have some like fake hair or have them practice on your hair for a couple dreads um, to do a couple dreads in your hair for practice and then take those dreads out and then hopefully they'll be ready to go from there um, they probably the first couple times won't do it very tight so they'll learn and so the ones that they just did they can comb out and do again um, and if you're watching this and you're one of those people who goes to that site and you know what site I'm talking about that tells you anything but natural is wrong you need to know why dreading your hair crocheting your hair to dread it in the beginning before it's before it's, it's not dreaded out it's not tangled up yet it's not in knots or locked um, it's not gonna be as damaging to your hair as it would be if your hair was extremely locked up tight and watch my video called how to make dreadlocks for an explanation on why it's not damaging when your hair is just straight and loose so that's for you, those of you who are gonna be idiots and leave dumb comments on this video about crocheting because there is a safe way to do it. That being said, I don't crochet my hair anymore. I just use the small loosening tool every once in a while. Anyway, sorry for the rabbit trails, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Learn what patience means, because dreading having your hair in dreadlocks will teach you patience. Understand that your hair will not look incredible when you first get it done. It will not even lay down more than likely until you've washed it a couple times and it has the chance to rest. So be ready for that. Um, I get probably more than any other comment I get is someone saying I've had my dreads for four months they look frizzy I've had my dreads for um, a, a six or seven months they look they still look crazy yeah that's gonna happen so I mean my I my hair for some reason I don't know why my hair looks better than it does on my hair looks better on camera than it does in real life I still have some frizzy stuff I'm sure you can't see but even along the bodies of the dreads you have you have little some fuzzies that come out and that's gonna happen the whole entire time you have dreads so get used to that um, they're still gonna look good even though you have a, the minimal amount of frizz on them or even a lot of frizz they're still gonna look good so with time you need to be able to, to wait for them to look incredible so I hope that you can do that and you won't cut them off in six months or comb them out in six months being very disappointed so that's what you should do when preparing your hair for dreadlocks you guys have a great day and thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, you can, like always, leave in the comment section below or send me a message and you know I'll reply. Thank you guys.